Okay, everybody, here we go. It's me, Gregory Manorino. Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. This is my pre-market report. Let's start off with this. It's interesting the way sentiment in this market changes and what you can take away from that. So what's happening right now is we're getting more Profit warnings from these major corporations moving into 2024. No surprise, we have covered it here. Samsung is the last company that I know of right now that just, again, warned about profits moving forward. As much as a 35% drop in profits for 2024. This, this is going to, in my opinion, um, spread throughout Every major corporation, again, look, despite what they're trying to sell you on the mainstream media, propaganda ministries, despite what's coming out of the mouth of our brain-dead president and, and everybody else, the world economy could not possibly be in worse shape. You all know that, but it's going to get worse. There's just no doubt about it. This prospect, okay, this fact is what's causing a bearish sentiment to develop on Wall Street. Now, you know how this works here. The market is driven by two factors, fear and greed. Fear is stronger, period, okay? But when you see this kind of thing developing, you know, look, this is how I operate, and I, I believe, you know, this is proven to be a fact. When you see sentiment in the market flip one way, you should be thinking the opposite. That's just the way the market works. How many of you out here, traders out here, okay, let me ask you specifically, my lions out here, um, you enter into a trade and all of a sudden it goes against you. That's because you're not understanding sentiment at the time. When people are bearish on a particular asset or the whole market, you got to start becoming bullish. When people are overly bullish, you got to become bearish. That's the way it is. That's the key to understanding market dynamics. It's really the truth. So what we're seeing here, again, on the back of profit warnings across the board, which are about to get a lot worse, layoffs, which are going to happen in huge amounts. Just wait till you see when this really starts rolling here. Um, and what, what companies are going to do is what they always do. They start... You know, cutting the workforce, cutting the workforce, cutting the workforce. You see how it works is the big fat cats at these corporations, they will never give up their multi-million dollar salary. So they cut the little guy. They cut the little guy or, or woman. They're gone. Okay. They cut them away. They, they're gone. You, you, you don't matter. So this is how this is going to play out moving forward. And this also plays into the agenda here of dependency on the system. Look, people's lives, those that are going to get laid off here, Samsung, like I said, like, they're going to be laying off a whole bunch of people here on the back of their 35% profit warning cut. Their life, those people, are is about to get very, very difficult here. And um, the prospect for finding a well-paying job right now is almost non-existent. So they're going to become unfortunately, you know, slaves to the current system as well. It's all a game how it's being played. Now, the fact, the fact that we have profit warnings across the board, the fact that we're going to see waves of layoffs coming down the pike here, the fact that, we're, we're you know, things are going to get a lot worse here, uh, you know, and this bearish sentiment that's developing in the market, people, I'm going to tell you straight out, it makes me even more bullish. And, you know, I've been called everything under the sun these days. Greg Perma Bullerino, whatever, you know, whatever. Look, I am not a perma anything. I look at the current situation and say, okay, gauging from what we have seen throughout history, this is where I currently stand. And you want to call me a permable? Go ahead. I don't really give a damn. It doesn't matter. People feel compelled to label things in life. If you feel compelled to label me, that's fine too. Okay, People have this compulsion to put labels on everything. I don't know why. But that's just the way it is. It's, <laughs> I guess it's part of the whole thing. But anyway, so again, bearish sentiment developing right now. 
Um, I'm not, it's not anything overwhelming, but I'm becoming more bullish here and I am still looking to get longer this market, despite the fact that the 10 year yield remains over 4%. It's not going to last people. It's not going to last. It's just not going to. Um, we know what's going to happen here down the pike. Again, on the back of what's happening here, the fact that central banks have, have the consumer by the throat, by design, have the economy by the throat, by design, they, they, they've already achieved that goal. Now, cutting rates moving forward would allow these institutions to fulfill their end game, to be the buyer and lender of last resort. Uh, that's where it's going to go. That's where they have planned this. They have laid out the groundwork, and that's where we're going here, period, the end. Should, it should be very simple to understand. Look, I'm sitting every day with all of you twice a day trying to lay out to the best of my ability, and you don't have to agree with me, all right? Where I think, where I believe things are going to go, and we have nailed this to the wall for years, years. You know, I, I, I challenge anyone, look at, look at the stuff we've covered here on this blog, okay? Not 100% has come to light. Again, I was wrong big time about my call with regard to my bottom price on crude oil. You know that. I, at the end of last year, I said we're going to be at 85. We are not even near that. Okay, so I got that one wrong. That was one thing I got wrong last year. I also got wrong one in the Federal Reserve uh, FOMC meeting, what they were going to do. So I got two things wrong last year. But in aggregate, I mean, come on, man. We're killing it. We're killing it. Um, no one can be right 100% of the time. It's impossible. You know, you put, this is a complex game. We put together all the pieces that we believe fit. Sometimes we got to fill in the blanks a little bit. It's the truth. Uh, it's a game of incomplete information. And unfortunately, that's what we need to do. But we come out with the most likely outcomes. If we do this, we're going to stay ahead of the curve. And I mean way ahead of the curve, especially because we know what our enemies want. We know who our enemy is. Central banks, period, the end. The rest of it is just, it's just a, <laughs> it's a sitcom. There's, there's nothing else like it. Anyway, so uh, that's, that's the story with where the market is going to go. And I, I, and I want to hear from my lions, especially those of you that are actually in this market, like me, that are paying attention to what's going on. Do you see it the way that I do? Or do you not? Even maybe those of you that are not in the market, what do you see? All right, you, what, what we all understand is the mechanism behind this. It's, it's just going to get even more extreme. Again, cash created out of thin air, global debt ballooning at its fastest pace, faster Moving forward, you need to bet against the debt, become your own central bank, get, gain exposure to commodities, uh, assets that are massively suppressed in value right now. Uh, you know, let me talk about that too real quick. I got a lot of negative feedback. Yesterday, I had said, okay, we're all, we're all patiently waiting for this, this decision on the Bitcoin ETF. I said specifically that if you have a good profit here in Bitcoin, right now, because this had a hell of a run-up. There's nothing wrong ever with pulling profit. But a lot of you who wrote to me seem to take a very strong exception with that. In fact, people saying, oh, Greg is this and Greg is that. What's wrong? Tell me again how I got it wrong. How is it possible ever to be wrong pulling profit? Now, I said ahead of this decision, this Bitcoin has had one hell of a run, run up higher here. Uh, and I believe it, and I'm not saying this is, you know, written in stone, but it could be a typical Wall Street sell the news. So you're going to wish you pulled profit at that point. If, if in fact, they make this announcement and Bitcoin jumps higher, if you pull profit, what did you really lose? Nothing. You could buy right back in. I mean, there's people who just don't understand the market. I get it. Look, you, you're never going to sell any asset at the absolute top and you're never going to buy in at the absolute bottom. It's just not going to happen. Are you going to get it right once in a while? Yeah, but that's not, that's not your concern. Your concern here is to get your investments and trades right, period. Whether you make 50% or whether you make 20%, it's a winning trade. I can't see why some of you get so up in arms about things from time to time. It's, the only people that would do that are people who don't understand the markets, don't understand what it means to have a profitable investment or a profitable trade. You understand? Anyway, going back to the markets here real quick. Stock futures are lower this morning. 
not by much. Um, yesterday, this all turned around. We'll see what happens. But again, I believe the market is setting up for a for new record highs moving forward and not too far off. You got the 10-year yield sitting just over 4%. You got the dollar here strong. You got the MMRI, Manorito Market Risk Indicator, real-time indicator, free to everybody, link in the description of this video, which is higher. I believe it's going much lower moving forward. I want to hear your take on that. Where is the MMRI going a month from today? Do you see it lower or do you see it higher? And what's your reasoning behind it? I would love to hear from you. So have a look at it. It's, it's graphed out. You can see a chart. So for those of you that may be interested, click on that. Look at the chart. Tell me where you see the MMRI going a month from today. All right. I'm, I'm really curious about that. Uh, cryptocurrency is under a little pressure right now. Gold, silver, and crude catching a bid. That's where we stand. People, as I have been telling you forever, the fact that we get together every day here, twice a day, to discuss what's happening, in my opinion, makes us invincible. And I'm not even saying nearly invincible. I see we are invincible because we got this covered from every possible angle. We're doing what Again, what the think tanks and the central banks do, we're p contemplating this over and over again every day. We're looking at the current picture, the current dynamics, gauging what, to the best of our ability where this thing is going to go. But our edge is that we understand what the goal is here of collectively central banks, what they want, and they're going to get it. If we realize there's no way out of that, we can play that game. And we can profit from it in a big way. That's just what I know to be true. All right. With that said, people, I'm going to let you all go. Please comment. Please share the video. Get it out there. Those thumbs up are required. All right. Honestly, get it. let's give this video a thumbs up if you got something out of it. Let the algorithms pick it up and let people hear this stuff. We got to band together. We got to take care of each other, as I tell you all the time. People are not going to get this kind of information anywhere else. I really don't believe that. Anyway, so I'll see all of you live 4.05 p.m. Eastern. Have some questions ready for me. We're going to get through this. Again, no matter what they do, we're smarter than they are. That's a fact. Love you a lot. See you later.